Hi, I'm Chris Padua. I am the CEO and founder of Enroute and a proud Filipina American. Chris, along with her co-founders Brad Pitt and John Fogelman, came together to create a range of organic, farm-to-bottle sparkling teas called Enroute. Inspired by her lola and growing up in Davao, Philippines, Chris is now a proud female Filipino-American CEO. I wanted to go to your college years. When you were younger, did you already know like, okay, college and taking accountancy? Was there even oh. room for what you liked or in your head that was the program? I think because we came here with nothing, it's typical Jokoy kind of setup. You had to be something that a family member was already doing. Hmm. And in my case, both parents are accountants and I'm the oldest child. So that that's all they know. So for me, there was fresh right off the bat to do accounting. Now, accounting is very much like watching paint dry. You have to... <laughs> what does you that have, mean? <laughs> you have to love spreadsheets and oh. writing everything down and booklets. It's actually not exciting. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and so similarly, I kind of found myself thinking, okay, I'll do this because I have to, because we have to survive. I was kind of told that's where the jobs are and that's what we have to be. Slowly, I realized in college, I can't do this for the rest of my life. What am I going to do? I can't do this. And I don't, I'm not skilled at anything else. So what could I possibly do? That's the way you talk to yourself, right? Like, what am I going to do? It's all I know how to do. And so it wasn't until I went to business school. After going into Wall Street, doing the finance route, I realized, okay, I need to do something that feels more like me. And I need a space to figure that out. And so I went to business school with the hopes of following something that felt more creative. Mm -hmm. And to me, media and entertainment always felt that way because it was self-expression, communication, connection. For me, moving to the U.S., it was actually escapism, yeah. you know, and sometimes my only friend in the afternoons. So for me, there was a bit of, you know, a fondness to how I felt about what the platforms could be to be able to actually connect through TV or through film or through music. Those were things that emotionally, I think, many Filipinos relate to. Yeah. And yeah. I felt like, well, if I spend a lot of time enjoying those things anyway, why can't I move some of the foundational things I learned in business over to something that I genuinely personally enjoy? Because I love to dance, Bianca. So for me, you know, watching and listening to content all day, I, I just, you know, that was part of my way to escape and to cope, to be able to watch Jennifer Lopez on A Living Color or, you know, like yeah. to be able to turn on Madonna. So for me, that interest happened soon after I got a taste of the real world job and what didn't feel like me. And you have to remember at the time, Wall Street was kind of robotic. We all had to look talk and be a certain way and mm -hmm. play a certain game this idea of having your own voice and your own authenticity didn't really exist in wall street and i think is still something that culturally is still being morphed and changed mm -hmm. you know is it correct for me to say that even if you didn't really love what you were doing you were good at it you were super good at it did that part of your journey give you the confidence to propel you forward would you say you know confidence is such an interesting word because i still feel like that's something i'm under construction on every day mm -hmm. back then i didn't know how to be in between my mentality because we came from nothing and we moved here so abruptly Kalako, you could either be excellent at something or you could be awful at something i didn't know how to be in the middle either I knew how to work really hard and get you know good grades or I'd get a D if I feel like oh you know I, I'll just study a little bit I didn't know how to study a little bit it was either I didn't study at all or I had panicked and studied and had to really cram and get everything done and so I didn't yet have a sense of how to modulate my life and have balance you know I didn't know how to live in that in between and so when I went into Wall Street and they do these things where they rank you every year against all your peers and you have to be in the top 10% the bottom 10% gets fired you know like they like it's like getting graded every year reality show yeah 
reality show so anxiety ridden for somebody like me and then it was kind of all or nothing I was constantly working because I constantly felt like if I don't do well I have nothing I didn't realize no there's so many roles in the world that you could pursue Mm -hmm. to me it was either you're going to get it or you're going to be a complete loser and failure that black or white thinking that's typical you know in that college age Mm -hmm. you know you're so deathly afraid of being a loser or you need to be the winner because Mm -hmm. then who are you if you're not a winner in something you know like you're trying to find your identity but you still think in black and white you don't have the experience you don't have the time yet to know hey that's not really how the world works and you have optionality so I just kept telling myself like if I'm gonna take a risk now is a good time to do it because I can always go back I have two years in business school to try and if at the end of it I haven't figured something out to give myself runway then I guess I'd have to go back to something I didn't really love doing Mm -hmm. and I really didn't want to go back but if I could I would I just didn't really want to go back so I gave myself kind of that timeline of the two years of business school to say I better figure this out so in that two years I would show up at alumni try to get a hold of alumni at UCLA to say I will work for free I don't care just teach me what entertainment finance is what entertainment strategy is what is that what are these words even mean you know entertainment distribution entertainment marketing teach me all parts of it because I know nothing and I have two years to give myself to absorb all of it and to give it my all. And, you know, luckily uh, a lot of the alumni like, you know, I think as Filipinos, we have that tenacity Mm -hmm. and we have that initial kind of willingness to try something, but two years is a good amount of time to kind of give myself enough runway to say, okay, if if something, anything happens in this two years, maybe it's God's sign to say, okay, here's a little window, a little door opening for you if you want to go for it. Yeah. So eventually what was God's sign that made you enter the media industry after coming from finance? Yeah. So after working for free at different internships, a job opened up at Disney. Almost at the end of my business school, I asked our boss at the time, I said, hey, can I put my hat in the ring? This sounds like a great opportunity. I would I would love to take the role. I already love the team. I'm interning here. I do anything for this job. He said, that'd be great, but we need to hire somebody now. It's March. You don't graduate until May or June. So I went back to the school and I said, listen, you need me to get a job. Job, and I need you to help me get that job. So what do I need to do? I'll double up on classes now to get myself graduated early. And the school thankfully was so flexible, but that was my first big sign and moment. And the job paid me half as much as Wall Street did. And I thought to myself, like, I would take half the pay to do something I love, you know, to go be at Disney. Like, you know, what's important at this stage? And I remember my parents being like, what? Yeah. I don't swell no more, huh? And then Dubai, because you have debt from school, from going to business school, I had debt. And so they were looking at me like I was crazy, you know, but I felt like um, that was the very first time I got to make my first decision for my own joy. And that happened later, right? That was like 25 or something like that, you know? Mid-20.